Hi everyone, uh, Eddie here. I'm Anjali Manan. That, that's like, you know, a huge thing in the HR industry. Everything changed yeah. since the pandemic. Could you share a little bit what happened? Uh, there, there was no choice. Mm. People didn't have a choice. Hi everyone, uh, Eddie here. Today we are back again to another CHRO talk. We have Dutch Lady today. And uh, Anjali, perhaps you can introduce yourself a little bit. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, thank you everybody from Peeplogy, nice to have you here. I'm Anjali Menon, I'm the director, Human Resources Director for Dutch Lady. We are, uh, we are a part of the Friesland Campina Group, which is a 150 year old dairy company. And we are a proud number one dairy brand in Malaysia. Uh, I come from India, that's where I was born and brought up. I started my career about 17 years back to be precise. Um, as a human resources professional, starting from India where I was looking at South Asia region which comprises of six countries. Then I moved to Indochina based out of Thailand and I've been in Malaysia since 2018. It's been five, more than five years and it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I have a question in that regards. Uh, what made you, uh, you know, in the HR field, got you into the HR field to begin with? Yeah, I'm, I'm an HR by accident but it's been a pleasure. So um, I've been, I'm a computer science engineer and post during my engineering I used to love the hardware part of computers, was not very fond of coding etc and that was the in thing in early 2000s mm. and um, but what I was good at really convincing people <laughs> in different ways. So I applied for a masters in both human resources and marketing and fortunately got into one of the best institutes for human resources in India. So that's how I landed up in human resources. But it's been a very enriching journey for the past 17 years. I have been across various streams of HR and I truly believe this is a function which helps lay down solid foundations of principles and values for the organization, which is important for long-term growth. I see. So uh, can you describe a little bit about what's your daily routine like working in HR? Uh, my every day is different because as a company in Dash Lady, we are going through uh, huge degree of business transitions and transitions for good. We have a strong vision, our purpose is nourishing the planet and people and we want to uh, ensure that every second a product of ours is consumed by a consumer in Malaysia. That's our aspiration as well. Mm -hmm. In that case, what we are trying to do con continuously is to have a much more consumer-centric and efficient business structure. So when you go through those changes and we came out of COVID, we are also constructing a new factory in NSTEC. I see. It is a IR 4.0 factory. So we are extremely busy as an HR team to ensure that is future ready. So my typical day is understanding with the business leaders what they did like, supporting the team members, uh, venturing out to understand what's happening as best practice in Malaysia and bringing it internally. So I don't have a standard day. I see. Okay. Uh, what has changed since before the pandemic and after the pandemic? I'm pretty sure that that's like you know a huge thing in the HR industry. Everything changed yeah. since the pandemic. Could you share a little bit what happens? I think this is the best time for human resources function post pandemic. Uh, I mean, not to not to forget and you know, belittle the impact of the pandemic. It was a very unfortunate period. But what it has done, it has brought to fore to every business, country, everywhere that uh, humanity is the most important thing mm. and human relationships are. So at the end of the day, we can uh, be very KPI driven and we can be very business driven. But if you don't take care of our people, uh, you cannot sustain. So that's where this is the best time for human resources profession, but it's also the most challenging because everybody expects a lot from you. So we have to, at a basic level, take care of mental and physical well-being of our team members. Mm -hmm. And secondly, ensure connections, because uh, that's a difficult part, you know. It's not about getting people back to office, but how do you ensure people are connected? Which was not a challenge before pandemic, it was assumed connections are happening. Now that's the biggest gap which is there. Uh, what have you uh, done to take steps to make sure that people are connected to each other? Has digitalization taken place here? Uh, okay, first of all, I would not say what I have done, but I think what my team has done and the leadership team here has done in the company because it's always a teamwork. 
So what we have done is we have started to have, uh, I'll come to the digitalization, but I think that's, that's just a part of the infrastructure and uh, you know, that's the tool, that's not the mindset. So what we have tried today, we call it our ways of working. We have completely moved into a hybrid model. And we have completely. said that, yes, we have said that this is how we will stay. So what do you mean by hybrid? Everybody has two days, every function has two days defined in the office and three days they can work from home. And within that two days as well, of course there are flexibility of, so people are by default virtual physical meetings are taking place. What we are also trying to do is we are ensuring that we have enough movements for connection, again coming back to it. So we have we have about 25 engagement events this year. Our target was four per quarter, but we saw really good response from employees right from. And Malaysia is such a multi-ethnic country, which is a great thing. We celebrate so many festivals here. So yeah. they give us an opportunity. Then we launched a game room in our supply chain function in our factory. Then we have launched our, uh, uh, we have recently launched our, we call it Mighty Blue, our um, sports and social club. Uh, along with that, we have a happiness corner, which we can show you later. Sure, sure. It is, uh, today is Friday, not one of the great days to be here, but no problem. <laughs> so, uh, the happiness corner is where, which we launched in May and it serves really good coffee as well as ice cream. So, people come and try, try to talk to each other, they meet each other. So, connections and engagement was very important as a leadership that we have started. And we have made it quite clear that there are no boundaries in terms of physical meetings and we will not be changing that. I see, that's a great initiative. Was there challenges when you start implementing any of these? Uh, so I, I think the point was when COVID was there, uh, there, there was no choice. Mm. People didn't have a choice. So when they didn't have a choice for one, one and a half, two years, they did it. So the stand was to be taken when they had a choice, which was somewhere around May onwards this year, mm. when we said that we are moving into out of pandemic, we are moving into endemic phase. Uh, what were the challenges? Yes, there are certain preferences. Different people have diverse thinking. Some people do prefer coming to office. So we had to reach a middle ground where we ensured uh, that there are collaboration happening and we define how the ways of working will be within teams. There's more empowerment to the leaders, functional head, and not only functional head, but the leaders, people managers. Okay. So it's a bit more trust-based, I would say, and we would like to keep it like that. That's the intention Amazing. now. Amazing. Could you uh, share a little bit about uh, upskilling your work process? Uh, and how would you identify great talents? Uh, upskilling uh, of the workforce, I believe, comes from uh, the business need, mm. like everything else. So our focus has been to look into very specific aspects we want to work on. Uh, for example, we have been working for past few years on coaching skills. Coaching skills? That's yes. And uh, there has been great work which the team has been doing. Our effort this year was to take it to more on career coaching conversations which we have insisted and passed on that message across the organization because and people and talents, the second question you're asking what are talents looking for? They are looking for career opportunities. The second thing which we are looking at is increasingly having a more digital mindset mm -hmm. because that's what we need to for a future factory and we will be embarking on that. I, I offer for all oh, every prerequisite yes. to have that so mindset. Yes. Um, when you talk about career pathway, uh, what have you done uh, currently in, or the team have done in Dutch Lady to ensure that that individual that comes to work here, what are their growth path in the individual? We, we have started taking steps on, so what we are trying to ensure this year is line managers having the right career conversations. Mm -hmm. Because what we understand, there can be great plans on paper, first of all putting those plans is also a task, yes. But there can be plans on paper, but people don't have that conversation. Second part is about career path. Mm -hmm. I have a different thinking in that aspect. I think the times have changed. It's about experiences, it's about our career path. Oh. It's about having the right experience profile. And that comes from interest of the individual. You know, so what we are trying to do is 
asking the line managers to have the right conversation and encourage people to pursue their passion and interest. And our career planning should be based upon individualization of those passion and interest. Rather than saying, if you come in marketing, this is your career path, HR. No, that's not how it works. Because this is a gig economy era. It's, yes. Yeah. It's not about staying with the same company. It's not even about staying in the same industry. It's about figuring out what you are, what you're interested in, what you're good at, and a company supporting you to grow there. And I strongly believe in it, and that's what we are trying to do at this point. So it's highly customizable, it's not one size fits all for all the companies? No, and it shouldn't be in today's era, it's my okay. clear take, if you ask me. Okay, okay. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the culture that you have built in, in, in Dutch Lady? How is it like, and some of the benefits for anybody who is interested to join uh, Dutch Lady? We have been focusing very strongly on psychological safety this year in the organization. Mental health, is it? Uh, mental health, okay, let me elaborate a little bit because I think it sounds like a buzzword most of the time. Mm. So I'll put a caveat here because see, what we were looking at is people are coming out of COVID, which is a black swan event. And then, as I mentioned, we are going through, we are building a new factory. We have went through a transformation of a commercial function. Mm -hmm. There's so much uncertainty and ambiguity. What people need to feel is, so psychological safety, we started in a very scientific way with Malaysia Urgent Care. And we started a program in April this year. We have trained all our line managers what it means. They are able to identify their own emotional needs and address that, plus have that conversation with the team members. Why it is important? Because if you do not have the right trust in the environment, people will not take risk. And if you talk about innovation in business, innovation does not happen if there is no risk no taking. Yeah. So we don't want to box mental health as, as something which HR needs to take care. We are saying it's a business imperative because it promotes innovation, it promotes risk taking. And that is why we started with the management team. So yes, if people, that's what we'll say, this is what as HR team we are trying to do, create an environment where people are willing to take risk, they are able to voice their opinion and challenge the status quo. I, I love what you just mentioned, that it's, a, it's an entire business you need to uh, inspire growth and innovation and that leads to individual feeling safe to be able to take risks. What a wonderful uh, insight from you. Uh, thank you Anjali for today's uh, interview. Do you have anything last say to you know the, the group about Dutch Lady or uh, anybody who might be looking for a job here? Uh, as I said, we are the number one daily brand. We have been in Malaysia for past 59 years. Next year is the 60th anniversary, so you'll hear from us more. Mm -hmm. We have been here for 150 years globally. Uh, if, if people are looking for a career which is long-term sustainable and an organization which has strong values and principles, this is the place to be. And we are consistently evolving with the IR 4.0 factory will be at the forefront of digitalization as well. So that's what we are about right now. Definitely digital is the future. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very Enjoy. much. Thanks. Yeah.